Do we really need to spell things out all the time? Do we really have to ask for things or should people just sort of kind of know what we want? Just know by like how we, you know, how we, how we are kind of How thing. we are, so. Mind reading, I suppose. Mm, kind of, but sometimes you think, especially if you're with a partner, you would expect them to know and that's what we're going to be talking about on this week's episode. No, get get real, real with the English, English sisters. sisters. Join us. And please do leave a comment and subscribe and follow us on Instagram and Facebook or wherever you like, really, wherever you get your social media fix. Right. So let's get down to the nitty gritty about do we have to ask? I mean, sometimes it's like that. You feel, why don't they know what I need? Especially when it's a partner, <laughs> I think. Or... I'm laughing because... Exclusively, well, mostly when it's a partner. Mostly when it's a partner. Sometimes you, like even at work, you would think, surely they should know. They should know I'm overworked. They should know this. Can't they see that I'm so busy? Why are they coming to me now yeah. and asking me for this? They should know. Do I really have to ask for, 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 for more time off? Or, you know, you, you would expect... But especially when we're talking about partners. Yeah, but I think you've, you've hit it on the nail there also yeah. with work. Because I remember that my um, my daughter's uh, boyfriend was telling me that she that he is he where where he where he works yeah. in the lab. He yeah. says often he gets like a line of people just waiting, waiting for him to help them. And, and he's, when he's really when busy, he's really busy doing an experiment, experiment and he thinks, can't they see? And he think, and he, yeah, he thinks, why can't they see how busy I am? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. literally, do do I have to wear a vest like what they did that I test? Mean, in? So he says sometimes he even wears the headphones, the headphones yeah. on purpose because he's got his own work to do. So he says, that, of course, the he constant loves distractions, helping constant distractions, other people, but. He says he finds it very difficult to actually get on with his own. Yeah, because it's true. You're being constantly distracted. Mm. It's like that experiment in the UK where the nurses actually had to wear vests and and they and they and it was like a red vest and it said, "Do not disturb." Med, uh, like they're doing their medication round. That was it because they were actually giving out the meds because. After a study was done that so many errors were made in medication leading to life-threatening situations oh, really? because of the distraction that was going on within the nurses. Mm. And they were just constantly, excuse me, excuse me, this was happening with, uh, with, with from doctors, from other colleagues, more than from, you know, any of the patients. And they said that wearing those vests actually helped them do a really much better job. And the, the margin of error was down to like 0 0.3 or something compared to, I don't know what it was before, but it was quite high enough for them to some kind of alarm to go off, you know, thinking why are the nurses getting distracted like that? So that was like a little thing in brackets, but I think it's along the same kind of lines as the nurses well, would think, can't you see I'm busy? Out that yeah. we're busy, that we're doing the rounds. Yeah, constantly, I'm busy, I'm busy. Whereas they just put vests on and it said, I'm busy. Do not disturb me. I bet you they still got disturbed. Well, no, they said it was dramatic. The people would see these <laughs> doctors probably and not colleagues. As much, yeah. No, no. Probably the odd one. No, because you're you're giving out medications. It's an important thing. You have yeah. to you have be to careful and concentrate yeah. with the right dose, etc. Mm. But anyway, yeah, I mean, it's about asking. Is asking is a kind of a tough one, I think, because it it puts you into more of a vulnerable position. I think when you have to ask. Yes, I think that's... I think that's why we don't like asking for things because we kind of feel a bit vulnerable about it. Yeah. Don't you think I'm that could be the maybe reason? It was how we were brought up as well. Culturally, yeah. Children don't ask, don't be quiet, kind of thing. Yeah, that could also be like from our generation, we're more like perhaps more prone to this, not wanting to ask. But I think this is. This goes through all kind of generations. Mm. I think it just makes you feel vulnerable. For example, you're in a situation, you're with your partner, you're feeling sad about something, you've had a bad day, and you're almost feeling like crying. I mean, that was a bit like me like, the other morning, for example, with my husband. I was, I've had this bad sciatica pain, sciatica, I think it's say, and and bad pain. it was just so annoying, and it, and it, 
I've had it already for like a month and I did all the exercises. I thought I got rid of it and then the other day it just came back again. And I thought, oh no, not again. I just wanted to go on with my regular activities and now I'm like blocked again. And I and I was having like a little feeling really sorry for myself, having a little tear come down. And then I could see he was just ignorant, saying, oh yeah, just sort of like ignoring me having his breakfast. And I and I actually had to think, oh, I'm going to have to ask for a hug now. <laughs> I'm going to have to actually ask for it. And I thought in my head, do I really have to ask for it? Can't you see? And then when I asked for it, then he got up and he came around. And he said, oh, all right. And he gave me a lovely hug, but kind of made me feel even more vulnerable having to ask for it. Mm. So, so did you feel better afterwards or not? I, but yeah. I kind of did. Why did you have a little bit of resentment? Why can't he? Just yeah, I had a bit of resentment. So <laughs> then it made me think about it because I thought, why can't he just do these on his own? These. But uh, you like these hugs, these kind of signs of affection. These. Yeah, but there's other signs. He of does. course, he always goes for action. Yes. Call the doctor. Take action. I I knew all the action. I'm I'm already doing everything else for my health. So I mm. I knew the actions mm. I had to take. So what? That's so the his conclusion love language. Is that you do have to spell it out sometimes, and yeah. it's worth making the effort to spell it out. It is worth it, and then I kind of like doing it more and more now with this. So maybe you can like teach your partner the kind of things that you like. So that eventually you won't have to keep asking. No, of course it. you can teach. You would think like I would be able to do this. <laughs> We've been married for more than thirty years. You would think I would have had. I would have taught him by now because mm. this is not a new <laughs> relationship. Sometimes you and forget as yet, things. you're continually evolving, and, and you, you forget to ask. It's you've... just like I forget that I used to make a certain recipe uh, like years and years ago, and I completely forgot I had that like in my weekly plan. You're right, my yeah. meal plan. I you think, oh yeah, we forgotten. used to eat that, and wherever it was, yeah. and rice and that bread. seems as if it's got nothing to do with what we're talking about, but it has because the same as you may forget yourself. Uh, uh, <laughs> what to do yeah your partner also evolves and forgets, they forgets your and needs maybe your needs or they don't realize that that's how you want to be and then sometimes loved. the longer you're in a relationship the more like you you form habits and uh, you get into your head more don't you, you? yeah your own head more. yeah yeah that's true yeah and you might you might forget that the other person needs your help more than what you actually think they do because they don't ask for it because they don't ask for it yeah you're right about that yeah i am getting more i'm like giving more hugs out as well especially after we did that well, podcast, did on, podcast physical touch. on the physical yeah. touch so i mean that was good because you're implementing it and i yeah. have been too but mm. <laughs> it's, it's it's amazing to think that yes asking for something does make you more vulnerable but then it also opens it's you up to receive it to receive <laughs> yeah ask what's it what's it i shall ask and i shall receive something like that ask <laughs> ask and you will receive uh, yeah i mean you want to you might not always receive and maybe that's where the problem stems that you might have had like, the fear of rejection the, yeah, yeah rejection obviously that's what when i say i feel like you're more you're, you're more vulnerable because you might get rejected in the case of a hug from your from your partner it's unusual you'll get rejected for that unless you're having an argument or something but in the case of perhaps in other situations where you have to learn to ask more for things then you could you could well be rejected yes mm -hmm. you could well have some kind of a rejection at work for example if you say no i'm sorry i want to ask for a promotion because i deserve it well yeah especially in case of a promotion there's always because more money be, and that you could maybe eat. why don't you value my services can't you think how much money i'm bringing to the company can't yes. you think that you could just raise my you know give me a promotion yeah and yeah. whereas if you if you may be the person that doesn't like to ask for it you want them to kind of see that you're worth it and see the value you're giving that's that that is definitely an issue there with the promotion i think that's one of the main things that people think about when they think about asking in their mm. job but it could be just things like not as big as a promotion but just like you kind of want praise like you want to you would like your boss or your superior to come to you and say, oh, you've really good job there. Mm. 
but you don't get it because they just expect you to do a good job because that's what you've been producing so far and they they kind of expect that of you and that's just like oh tick he she with them they did it great and, but you would like some kind of uh, so that 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 can make you feel vulnerable as well to actually go up to yeah, your but how are you going to ask for that though it's like, yeah it's kind of like a bit difficult isn't it but you really how can you say i want praise i don't think you say i want praise <laughs> but you might say um you what, what, yeah d- d- did you did you like the presentation i did last week or something they say sure yeah great great job you know you might actually ask for more feedback in that case and try and do it something like more professionally really you just want to say yeah you're great you did a great job (laughs) and some people need this kind of praise more than others and it doesn't make you weak or um different if you do need that kind of praise it's it's really it can really be helpful in a job to get that kind of praise. Well, I think it's very encouraging. It's really encouraging <laughs> and it can make you feel more motivated. A lot of the time you, you might not get that praise though. So hmm. But I think if you can learn to sort of say, if you've got any feedback, um they might think you what you what are you doing? But eventually they will give it to you. They'll give it to you. Hmm. Let's hope they don't give you negative feedback, though, because some bosses, it they only look for the negative. Yeah, Yeah, that's why it's like sometimes a bit scary when Mm. you use the word feedback. Yeah, because they will typically think, (laughs) "Um, well, actually, you could have done better when all you wanted was, oh, good, good job. You know, that was great. (laughs) So, yeah, you're right about that. You, know, you can get the negative Maybe you feedback. Maybe frame it in the way. Were you happy with the presentation? Yeah, I think you're right about that. Yeah. I think you know. I think it went quite well. What do you think? Yeah, that's it. What do you think about the last? Uh, I was really. Ple- I was really pleased with it. Maybe yeah. something like that. Yeah. Because if you do ask for feedback, you'll probably get the negative. You'll probably get some positive well, and think some negative. If you're but... already in the position, because obviously if you're not thinking about this, you've obviously got someone you work for that's, that's always, always praising yeah. you and giving you lovely feedback. Yeah, or saying, Oh, that was lovely, if you're great. Thinking thanks. Along those lines, it may be that you're not you're not getting it. And they say that that's what most people want in Yeah, the, more than, more than any... financial rewards. Exactly. They just want to say, oh, God, that's a great job. I mean, I know somebody who, who works in the family business. He needs that all the time. Mm. He needs great job, fantastic. So I've learned that, and now I do that, and we all do it with that particular person because we know that's, that's what they're going to thrive. That's what's going to motivate them. Mm. And very often I can hear himself, he, you know, like saying it to himself. <laughs> This is a great job. We're so, you know, we're 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 fantastic. We're yeah, we're doing good. And so, then you can you can also add that. So maybe that's a way of getting around it as well. By yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I just do think that in relationships, especially, you you have to remember that the other person isn't a mind reader. Yes, definitely. And that sometimes they have been brought up differently to you. There could be cultural differences as well that you may not be used to. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got cultural differences. Totally, <laughs> totally, yeah. There's no making you a cup of tea, love. Like, Your in England, it's... Italian. He oh, yeah. think of tea. No way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and since there is... If anything, it's the opposite. He wants you to make it. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. It is that cultural background, and especially from 30 years ago, it really was, you know, <laughs> the the the... The sweet sex, as they call it here, that you know, the, the the women that were the ones that were the caretakers and making all the stuff. So it was very different to like when we were brought up in the UK, where it was the men who would massage a lady's feet and make the and tea, spoil them, and spoil them because more. Because the ladies did so much work already. Exactly, it was the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, hey, <laughs> so it's been a lot of teaching there and. Uh, that's that's just totally cultural. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, because it does yeah. make such a difference, and sometimes people don't consider a cultural difference. What's what's maybe considered like 
yes, you should ask for promotion. You should fight for your oh, rights. Oh, definitely. Should, in maybe other in the Western culture, it's yeah. It's considered very rude. Rude, and, yeah. You know, you don't do that. You Not wait. Of, you wait, yeah. You wait to be given. You wait to be praised. You wait to be whatever. Any kind so of acknowledgement. Sort of take into, that into account as well when you're thinking, definitely. do I really have to spell it out? Sometimes you really do. You really, really do. Mm. You have to ask and... Uh, and you shall receive. <laughs> yeah. And you, you and will receive. I think a lot of the yeah. times it's important to say that it can make or break relationships because sometimes you, these things can just fester if you don't ask for them and you can just think, this person really doesn't care about me. Yeah, they really don't get me. They don't they care. Don't get me, they They've just seen me go off lo- looking so upset and they're not coming running after me. You yeah. might expect that. You, in your culture, you might think, oh, they should be running after me now. And they might not. Because they might not. I just think you need space. Exactly. Maybe they don't want someone running no. after them, and they think, "No, I want to be quiet now." So they think, "Okay, I give them respect." Yeah, yeah, that's so true. That is so true. They cannot mind read. <laughs> they just cannot. No matter how long they've been with you, they probably know, and they can predict certain circumstances, especially <laughs> after a long time. They think, "Oh, I better do that or that," uh, but. They still can't mind read. No. That brings to mind uh, our little Otto, that he he kind of mind, he does mind read how you pets, I think. Yeah, they his little like, dog, yeah. They can sense when you're, um, uh, when you need a hug or when you don't, when you don't want one, when you want to be like quiet. Like when I get up in the mornings, if if he knows that I'm still half asleep, he won't oh, come he and will. jump on me. No, he, oh really? Yeah. Oh, he came and jumped on me, all yeah, right. Because, because when I when I did when I looked after him on holidays, <laughs> that's because he was more excited. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he's not used to it, was he? <laughs> Disappearing off upstairs into the bedroom, he would come running up like. No, to me, if you can see, well, maybe because you're wide awake in the morning when you wake up. You're not half asleep like I am. Sometimes if I'm half asleep and I'm just pottering around really slowly, he'll let, like really he, respect he me. He understands it. He does it. a little yawn as well. And other yeah. times when he's, he's uh, more lively, he'll come jumping up on me. Maybe, yeah. Maybe I don't realise it. Yeah, I am quite wide awake in the morning. Quite boisterous. <laughs> well, I don't know about boisterous. It's still quite yeah, quiet. Quite lively, but aren't you? Probably livelier than you, yeah. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> <laughs> don't know. It depends on the days, really. Obviously. Yeah. So you mean that pets and, like, animals understand more in a can, way? In a way, they, like, maybe read the body language more. more. They know your patterns more, like what you said, don't you know me by now? They can get to know you a bit more, maybe, than... Because they because don't have the language to, barrier, I yeah, suppose. Because a lot of the times, the words we say are not, not what we really want. Yes. Sometimes we might say, yeah, I just want to be alone right now. And sometimes that may be true. But sometimes what you really need is a big cuddle. Mm. And um, I mean, I never say that because whatever I say, I mean. But this is complex in many relationships yeah. where we know that many people say different things, but their body is They're communi- like testing. Sometimes they do it to test the partner as well to see if they really are in tune with them or not. Yeah. The testing phase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah, that, that can be tricky for many for many people because it's, it's well, even it's harder. Some people say, don't play games with me. Just tell me. Yeah. Just tell me straight. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Don't they? Whereas the animals don't have that don't play games because they know because your body is telling you. Yes, they, they, the they're language. in sync with the body language. They can tell. They can, they can like uh, feel these emotions more. But with the language, you get all these that's misinterpretations. Why just, I think that's why it's important to sit down and talk a, a lot about what your expectations are, how you want. If you're somebody that wants you, to just give it to me real, you yeah. know, or if you don't mind having these little games every now and again. Yeah, and sometimes maybe I think you, you have need to that. respect the game yeah, playing. Yeah, definitely the game playing, absolutely. Because sometimes that's what people need. That's what they need to be. They don't like to be so straightforward. They can't. No, they can't. They it's part it of like, the relationship. Yeah, they find it like almost offensive for them to be so straightforward and just to ask for things and just say, look. 
Yeah, they say, it's, it's surely. Why, surely, do I have to, you know, do I have to really spell it out like that? It's so rude for me. But yeah. I mean, I think you, if you are in a relationship like that, you have to come to a bit. To terms with to it. Terms you have to come it, to accept it. To acceptance and also to, like, be a bit flexible, both of you. So sort of come to middle ground. Yeah. Saying, like, okay, if I ask for something. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> Give it to me, yeah, like, uh, um, you know this is something I've thought about for a while, so, yeah, I suppose so, yeah. No, but think. also, like, to be more respectful of each other. Yes, so that's the utmost, so respectful. To understand, understand each other's, each other's needs personalities. More. Go into their shoes a bit more, sort of see what they need. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. <laughs> mm. Well, let us know what you need and <laughs> how you find. Do you have to spell things out in your relationships or at work? A lot of us do, unfortunately, because I'm not really one that likes to spell it out. No. But sometimes I am. It depends. No, that's a bit. That's no, not you true. do. You know how to ask no, for what you yeah, want. I sure. Know how to yeah. Do it. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> it's a skill. The more it's you do it, you do little baby steps. You yeah. start by asking for tiny little things. Yeah, for things like for a cup of tea and Yeah, hugs, small things. And then afterwards, you, you can elaborate on <laughs> to larger things. <laughs> Like the other kind of issues that you want to deal with, especially in relationships or yeah. at work as well. Yeah. And please do hit the like button and come and follow us and hit the subscribe button on YouTube too because it does help us grow. And we really appreciate all of you. Our podcast is growing with you too. Wonderful. Lots of love. Lots and of love. Smiles from the English, English sisters. sisters. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.